Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Phew, got through that one. Okay, so, hey, before we start our, our wonderful video today called How Are You Coping During the Pandemic, wanted to tell our regular joke, and it's uh, May uh, 7th here in Portland, Oregon. It's 74 degrees. We've had the most incredible weather since the spring equinox. And that uh, reminds me what my gardener told me the other day. He said, I've been so excited about spring, I wet my plants. <laughs> All right, so nine weeks ago, this very day, I sat with these two wonderful gentlemen, Jerry and Joshin, and spontaneously decided to make a video about the coronavirus pandemic that was just uh, getting in gear, especially here in the US. And what I reported then is that People were panicking so much that I couldn't get any toilet paper, I couldn't get any gloves, I couldn't get any sanitizer, and uh, it was really pretty tough. So now I'd like to give you an update. Well, since then, I must admit that some of the intense fear has died down and we're getting used to the new normal. As an example, here in my basement studio, my two wonderful videographers are keeping their social distance and wearing masks. So this is something that never happened before and this is what we're gonna be doing for the near future. That's fine. But there are other stresses and things that I really miss. One of them is personal contact. Now, I know that with the sheltering in place, the agoraphobics in the world are jumping for joy, but there's something about being in a person's physical presence that I feel I'm missing and I feel a bit deprived. And now, on the other hand, of course, my godson's beautiful five-year-old son, Rainier, just had his fifth birthday. And what did we do? We did it on Zoom. There were all these uh, people's pictures on the screen, like 15 of them. And I bought some stock, oh well, but still, uh, there's something about human contact that it, that is really cool. I'm so glad that these two brave souls came to film me today. So how are you guys doing? How are you doing with the social distancing? Do other people besides me miss being around other people? Another unforeseen consequence of the pandemic that's happening to many families uh, is that uh, because there's no school, parents are having to homeschool their children. Now, this can be very difficult in some cases. My darling niece in Monterey, California, has a special needs child who's eight or nine years old, and he really benefits from being in school and having the structure and seeing other people do their work. And at home, he doesn't have that, so he can't really stay focused. Uh, you know, every five or 10 minutes, he's trying to, um, you know, get him back on track. And this has been really, really difficult. Um, so I wonder if any of you guys are having the same problems. You can leave your comments in the comment section. Me. I love children. I came to Oregon in 1973 to be a teacher. And um, although not everybody shares my sent sentiments, uh, W.C. Fields, one of my favorite uh, filmmakers of all time, uh, someone once asked him how he liked children. His response was, properly cooked. By the way, I didn't really mean to offend anybody with that joke. I know that some parents probably feel like cooking their kids, but no, I mean, I, I told Joan, my wife, when she first uh, got together with me and wanted to be a Montessori teacher, I said, I don't care how much money you don't make, uh, being a teacher is a noble calling. And that's what I've done and many of my friends have done. So you teachers out there, keep up the great work. But what about economics? Well, you know, some of my teacher friends actually are still getting paid even though they closed down the schools. That's good, but that's not true of everybody. The layoffs continue to pile up. There's this really famous uh, company in, in Michigan that's been open for 139 years. Uh, I think it's called the Michigan Block Company, named after me. No, but it was, it was they did uh, uh, cutting boards uh, for butchers and stuff. A very, very uh, respected company. They had to close down shop. So I don't know what's going on, but it's really, really sad that so many good people are not being able to work. We do have the stimulus package. The checks are coming out. I just got mine. Uh, some friends got there. So hopefully you'll get yours soon if you live in America. But still, if you're struggling to make ends meet, $1,200 is, you know, it's not all that much, so my heart goes out to you. Of course, no matter what stress you're dealing with, whether it's this pandemic or something else, it's always good to go back to the essential self-care strategies that we've been talking about on this channel since 2012. Physical self-care, mental emotional self-care, spiritual connection, social support, and lifestyle habits. I love this chart you're seeing on the screen. Anybody who doesn't have one, just email me, douglasplock at gmail.com. I use it every day. I try to do something in every uh, single category. Kind of reminds me of the Chinese restaurants when we used to uh, go in New York City back in the 50s and 60s. One from column A, one from column B, one from column C. So try to use as many of these self-care strategies as you can. And the three I like to focus on, like I call the basics, 
make sure you're getting enough exercise, make sure you're eating well, and make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. Those are the three basics, food or diet, sleep and exercise. And finally, my favorite mantra, this too shall pass. Now we come to the part of what I really wanted to share with you. I wanted to share with you everything, but this part especially, I believe, and many others do, that maybe there is a silver lining during this challenging time. I just got a, uh, a email from a, actually an attorney of all people, female attorney, uh, lives in the UK, said that perhaps this pandemic is a mes message from nature. Uh, this virus is trying to tell humanity something. Slow down, <laughs> chill out, because what you're doing, the impact you're having on the earth is being really destructive. So we're gonna force you to take a time out. You may or may not agree with that, but that occurred to me intuitively. The other thing is that since we have to stop business as usual, maybe we could use this as a spiritual timeout, a time to get back in touch with ourselves and our spiritual nature. And this reminds me of a wonderful quote. I heard Eckhart Tolle say it, but I don't know who really first said it. When the ego weeps for what it has lost, the spirit rejoices for what it has found. As an example of this silver lining principle, I was talking to one of my coaching clients, uh, retired, and uh, this sheltering in place has given her a lot more time to uh, be with herself, to get involved in old hobbies. She said, you know, I'm really enjoying being alone, and when these restrictions are finally lifted, I may not rush to accept every invitation that comes my way. So talking about new normal, some of us, including me, I'm getting a lot more riding done as a result of this. So, you know, for every corresponding disadvantage, sometimes there's an advantage. Uh, I like what Jack Bowen said, every adversity contains within it the, uh, <laughs> what did he say? The seed of an equivalent or greater good. I'll say that again, because it's such a potent quote. Every adversity contains within it the seed of an equivalent or greater good. How true. Well, there you have it. I just heard as I was finishing the script that our great governor, Kate Brown of Oregon, just said that as of May 15th, some uh, camps and summer schools and childcare may be starting again. So, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Ted. That's my brother's birthday, May 15th. And, uh, but anyway, yes, so things are slowly getting back into place here in Oregon. Hopefully this will continue. But in the meantime, remember that great ancient truth. It isn't so much what happens to you, but how you respond that counts. This has been Douglas Block. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, give it a like. Uh, YouTube likes that. And since uh, I don't know why my viewership has gone down during the pandemic, who knows? Does that make any sense? But anyway, I've talked to other YouTube videographers say the same thing. So give it a like. Uh, support this channel. Uh, brings good things to you. And you can also click on my uh, photo during the closing credits. That will help you subscribe to the channel. And if you click on the bell right to the upper right, you can, will be notified every time I do a video or have a new live chat. In the meantime, if you want to uh, support this channel on a monthly basis, just click on the uh, Patreon uh, image. Uh, so much just became a monthly sustainer for $15 a month. I appreciate it. And uh, otherwise, um, I hope you all are enjoying <laughs> this beautiful day as I am. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in my mental health recovery. I meant to say your mental health recovery, but how about our mental health recovery? How does that sound? I wish you the best in our mental health recovery. Thanks.